Okay, guys, welcome back to part four, the final part of our Rebel 62 Chevy Impala SS video build. So, back where we left off last time, we got our freshly chromed pieces, which have been sprayed with the uh, ProScale Chrome system and protected with R2K as well. We're inserting the pre colored red rear lights into these, a little bit of Bob Smith's glue on the back of them. Now, don't forget our chrome system, once it's 2K'd, it doesn't dull, it doesn't wipe off, it's impervious to nearly everything and you can glue things you can polish it should you wish as well to make it a nice high gloss 2k uh, very reliable and uh, yeah looks absolutely fantastic so popping the rear lenses in the back we glue those in place once you're dry we've got some tamiya enamel x11 again uh, on a micro brush and we're just brushing the back of them to make them a bit more reflective And then on the front lights, a little bit of Bob Smith's in and around the lights around. Just a touch in each corner. And we can get our light lenses in place. So the Bob Smith is non-fogging. So it doesn't haze up clear parts. Now it will mark them if you get it on there. You will see it. But on parts like this, if it's just around the edge, it'll glue them in place without marking the glass at all. And thankfully, because it's... Um, foam safe it takes a little bit longer to dry so you can still move parts around and get them positioned properly as and where you would like so a bit forgiving and it does allow you to reposition parts like i'm doing right there so there we go get it in place push it fully home same on all the other ones as well get them home and there we go, there's our front headlight lenses in place on our beautiful chrome grille. There we go. Right then, so final stages of the build. So this is the time you need to be really careful in what you're doing, unlike me here. So I've just done a bit of work and I'm packing up to go in the house. So taking off the precision nib off the CA glue, and little known to me, just doing that, I flicked a spot of super glue on the roof of the Impala. Now, thankfully, using the super glue debonder that we sell over on ProScale with a cotton bud, you can gently wipe this off with no detrimental finish to the 2K underneath. So don't rub too hard, just rub it and it should come off before your eyes. Turn it around to a clean bit of the cotton bud. And you need a little bit more debonder, pop it on the cotton bud just very very gently wipe over the top until it's gone and then wipe it off with a dry cloth or like i normally do my t-shirt and yeah no detrimental problems at all so be very careful when you're taking super glue lids off luckily it didn't land on any glass parts or anything it just landed on the paint work. I say just, but at least that's easily fixable. So thankfully there. So we've got some Mr. Sorry, no, it's Tamiya. I'm going to have to look for the number. LP24 semi-gloss black. Thin with a touch of Tamiya lacquer thinner. And we're going to put a semi-gloss clear coat on these wheels. Now what it'll do is it'll dull down the toy-like high shine of the Pegasus wheels. And it'll make it look a lot more realistic and bring it into line with our Pro Scale Chrome. So I think it's an important step to do. If you're going to use kick chrome parts, I would suggest doing a semi-gloss clear coat and that way it takes that horrible high shine off and just makes it look a bit more realistic. Now the chrome finish is beautiful, it's flawless, but it's just too shiny for my liking. Knocking the chrome back a bit with the semi-gloss makes it look a lot better and as I say, brings it in line with our Pro Scale chrome and makes it all match as well. So, nice easy job to do. Doesn't take long at all. And uh, yeah, I think it makes all the difference in the world, personally. So, our interior is all in place, as you can see, all in. We're going to put some of our dials in place as well now. So, we've got plenty of decals to go in. Uh, probably easier to put them in when the dashboard was out, but I'll be honest, uh, between you and I, don't tell anyone, I forgot. I completely forgot to put them on. Thank you I remembered before we did anything else. Uh, but there's several of them. There's quite a few of them. So some careful application. Get them in place. Get them all lined up. And then this really tricky one on the gear knob. 
So we painted the gear knob yesterday, the day before, in Tamiya enamel white paint. It's dried, and we've got a really tricky gear knob. Now, the quite cool thing is, and the pictures at the end of the video, you can actually see the gear knob through the window, and you can see the decal on there. It looks really cool as well. And then we've got the emblem on the center of the dashboard, which I've just pulled off with a micro, uh, with my uh, brush. These are all set in place with the UMP decal solutions. And while it's a very white interior, I think all those green parts, especially the green engine, looks fantastic. It just breaks up the monotony. Even underneath doesn't look bad, even though we kind of cheated and assembled it all first. So very happy how this is looking. It's coming along really well. Love the green accents on the interior. I think they really bring it alive. And I'm loving that green engine as well. Another thing I fell in love with lately is these zoom on number plates. So we started stuck in zoom on a Pro Scout. These number plates, they come with an embossed photo etch license plate and then the matching license plate in a decal. So when you put the decal over the embossed PE, it makes it look like a stamped number plate, which is really, really cool. And these look fantastic. So we've got US, Canada and Japan ones at the minute. I'm waiting on the UK ones to come back in stock. But these just look absolutely fantastic. They, they are literally the simplest thing in the world. They're not expensive to buy. We, we get a huge set of them for like five or six pounds off pro scale. Um, but they look absolutely great. It's a really nice finish and touch. So I find it easier to glue the photo etch in place first. A little bit of CA glue. You can see our beautiful chrome there looking good. Needs a, a wipe over. It's got my greasy fingerprints all over it. And then we pop our decal over the top, get it all lined up with the raised areas of the photo etch. Like so. Get it all lined up. There we go. Then hit it with our UMP decal solutions. And again, decal solutions are fine to use on the Chrome because it's protected by the 2K. We just get these set in place. And once it all snuggles down, it looks like a real stamped license plate. It's very, very cool. And these things are great. So loving these. Adds a nice bit of detail to the kit. Very subtle, but they look really good. So yeah, nice little touch. So with that now, we've got the next stage, which is flatten back our bodywork. So we had a fantastic 2K finish out the gum. Very happy with it. We've got some water with some washing up liquid in, and we've got our Trizec 6 and 8,000 pads here. What we're going to do is we're going to flat black, or flat black all the clear coat. Now, two reasons for doing this. Number one, it thins out the clear coat, makes it look a bit more realistic. A lot of people complain saying 2K is too thick. And sometimes it can look like it. some of the 2Ks are really thick. Pro Scales actually dries quite thin, considering how much you can actually get away with putting on there. It, it flashes off nice and thin. Um, flattening it back thins it out even more, and then polishing it up just brings a next level shine to it. So flattening it back and polishing it makes a huge difference, and I'd always recommend doing it to any 2K surface. And secondly, if you get any dust spots in there or imperfections, this is a way of getting rid of it. So we go around the whole body with the 6,000 first. Then we go around the whole body with the 8,000, being wary of any raised areas or corners because it's so easy to burn through the paint. Take it nice and easy. And then we'll come in with our polish and compound sponges and polish it all up to a nice high shine. It's a very important stage. I do see people skipping it, and trust me, Anything Q2K will benefit from being polished. Now, I didn't do the chrome. I don't think it needed it. On the bodywork, my finish was great out the airbrush. I had a couple of dust spots I wanted to get rid of, so I was going to do it regardless. And it always looks better flatter back and polished. You get a higher shine. It makes it look thinner. It just looks so much better. So it's a step well worth doing. The Trizic 3M pads, they're a little bit difficult to find, and they're not cheap. But one pad will last you a long time because you cut it up into smaller pieces like I've got here. Uh, polish it up with the uh, Zoom On polishing pads that I've been using for the past few months now. With a good high quality compound and polish. And the finish you'll get will look absolutely phenomenal. So this is my little polishing box. I've got my Trizic pads in there. As you can see I've got some of the big ones and the little ones. I've got some of our Zoom On polishing sets in there as well. 
and uh, get your different coarse sponges in there and use that with corresponding compounds polishing up all the body with our proxon mini tool i did just use my little battery power tool but it kept running out of juice halfway through so i've gone to my proxon tool which is much easier to use uh, and it has a full pedal control so we're using Menzerna cup polish 2500 super finish 3500 and autoglim super resin polish so we're going to start with our zoom on polishing set which is here but a brand new one just to show you the way we're going to do it and we're going to start with the green which is the coarser one of the sponges and the coarser coarser polishing compound which is the menzana 2500 now to minimize how much gets flicked around the room by the mop uh, we're going to put it on by finger to begin with so i probably got a little bit too much here but hey ho it is what it is and i tend to do all the upper surfaces first so the roof the boot lid uh, the bonnet if it's attached uh, and the front wings as well and we're just spreading it around to get it everywhere like i say there's a little bit too much here it is going to flick it a little bit but wipe your finger off grab your tool this is foot operated foot pedal so it's so much easier to use it's on its lowest speed, which I think is 5,000 RPM. It's a very low torque machine as well. And we're just going to work our way around the entire body. Now, don't leave it one spot too long. Be careful on the edges, again, because it'll burn through if you're not careful. But as long as you're nice and systematic and careful going around, you'll have no problems doing this. You don't need a lot of pressure on the sponge either. Let the sponge do the job with the polish. And just work your way around. Now, be wary of that yellow part of the tool as well. If that catches the body, it will mark it. So be conscious where's that, where that is at all times. And just work your way around nice and slow, systematically all around the body. I tend to go over the spots a couple of times going different ways. Just to make sure I've got everywhere covered. And like I say, be careful of any edges or corners because the paint's always inherently thinner on those parts. So just take your time here. And when you've done one section, grab a nice clean bit of, I use t-shirt material, cut up t-shirts and buff it up. And you'll see just off this first compound, which is a coarse compound, it's a medium coarse compound, the shine we get is absolutely amazing. So when you work this up through to other stages of polish, the shine we're going to have is going to look absolutely fabulous. So it's a very important step. So if you've never done this before, I'd recommend giving it a go. Now, it is a learning curve, so you need to really be careful what you're doing. You don't get too heavy with the sanders or the polisher. But once you get the hang of it, it's really easy to do. I dis discounted these sponge mops for quite some time. And I just tried them because we got the, the Zoom on in stock. And I, I bought them from elsewhere first. Uh, I got them off Amazon. But the Zoom on ones are much better quality. They just seem to be a higher quality and last better. Um, I found the cheap ones on Amazon, the Velcro stopped working after a couple of uses and the, literally the pad would go flying off. Um, the Zoom on, much better quality. Uh, like I say, I kind of dismissed these for quite a while. Um, what a game changer they are. It makes it so much easier. It does a better job. It looks absolutely phenomenal. Again, this is the coarse compound and the shine we got back straight away just off the coarse one is just mind-blowing. It really is. So... We're going to work our way through the um, different sponge compounds on the tool itself. And then we're going to work our way through the medium cut, which we started with, the fine. And then finally, which I think is this one, is the Autoglim Super Resin Polish, which, as you can see now, the shine is absolutely fantastic. I've got a toothbrush there that I use just for getting the polish remnants out of the... Um, uh panel lines of the car and then here you can see we're brush painting under the bonnet and inside of the car now i have left out another step here you are going to see it in a minute because i can see it on my timeline i've actually not put it in the right place on the video but it doesn't matter because it explains it perfectly so we're going to jet wash out all the old remnants of polish in a minute uh, but for now we're going to paint underneath the bonnet in water-based black paint and then we're going to do the inside of the body shell as well. Just get rid of the body color parts inside. Now, ideally, I would have liked to have done white. But I don't have a white brush paint, so I went with black instead. So it's model color black, thinned with a drop of water. 
literally just a drop. Whoop. There you go. Whoop. Uh, we've got a nice flat brush for it. And we're just going to brush paint the interior down the door cards to where the actual interior covers it. I didn't lick that, by the way. I think I wiped it on my T-shirt. Terrible habit either way. But anyway, it's better than licking it, isn't it? Um, yeah, we're going to brush paint all the interior parts. Now, because we're putting water-based over 2K, if you get any excess on anywhere, it'll wipe off. Whether it's dry, wet, whatever, it'll just wipe straight off. It will not stick to the 2K whatsoever. And it's a case of just going around, getting paint all over your fingers, everywhere, until it's all finally covered. And like I say, at the end, once you're done, if you notice any excess, get a cotton bud. Don't lick it. I didn't lick that. It's definitely not my mouth. Yep. And you can just gently wipe away any excess paint like so. Don't lick that now. That paint doesn't taste good. I didn't lick that one either. Don't care what anyone says. I didn't lick it. And then just run it around all the chrome work and just wipe off. Even if this dries, it'll wipe off with ease. That is the beauty of using different chemical paints on each other is they don't react, and they tend to just wipe off each other with no bother at all. So there we go, job done. And here we go, we go back in time, and here we are, uh, jet washing out the panels of the paint. So I bought a cheap Fenger airbrush, it was £15 off Amazon, and all I use it for is this. It's loaded up with water, it's a cheap, it's not a very nice airbrush if I'm honest, and I'm literally jet washing the panel lines to get rid of any remnants of polish. So I tend to go around once with the water. It's on about 40 PSI. I whack the pressure up. Um, I go around once. It tends to soften it up. And then I go around again. And it gets it all out then nicely. It just speeds up the job. And I'll be honest, it's actually quite fun to do. <laughs> I always look forward to doing this. I think it's the inner child in me. Uh, and then cut to where you can dry it off. Lickety split. No bother at all. Lickety split? My God. And here we go, we flash forward again, and somehow I've missed me putting the windows in. So they've literally been glued in place, a little bit of CA glue, a little bit of a kicker to kick them. I missed it, I don't know how I did it, I think I forgot to click record. And uh, yeah, just the front and rear screen. And the side windows are in, and we're going to just tease the body over. Take your time here, there we go. That fits in place. Now my main concern here is with everything in the interior in everything in the glass in are my wheels still going to sit at the same ride height so before we go any further that's the next thing we're going to check and thankfully they do so a little bit of glue we can get these in place there we go Now, be careful at this stage, you don't get glue on your fingers because you don't want to get it all over those wheels, all over the body. As you can see, we've got our discs behind. We've painted our um, calipers in gold. And I'm just straightening everything up. Like so. Turn it around to get the discs orientated the right way with the calipers. There we go. Happy with that. The ride height looks absolutely perfect. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. It sits absolutely beautiful. It really, really does. Very happy with this. It's, uh, it's turned into one of my favorite builds to date. Now, chrome trim. We're definitely getting near the finishing stages now. So some Bob Smith gold, just a couple of strategic little points where the grill is going to sit, mainly on the inside of the body. Actually, it's a rear light cluster, not the front grill, my mistake. Fit on this, fantastic. I am going to have to get another one of these kits because I thoroughly enjoy building this thing. And then same on the front. Now, the front is like a three-piece section. I was warm of this by Dan um, about how tricky it was. So he recommended gluing the grill in first. Then the middle piece and then the last piece at the end and yeah it worked absolutely perfect um it kind of doesn't go together how you think it will there's a lot more of an angle on this front grill so it's a case of getting it all lined up hold it for a second or two and let the ca glue grab and then a couple of dabs of glue underneath and we can get this little bit of trim 
in place. This is body color and 2K'd. You can barely see it on the car, but it is there, so it's well worth taking the time. It's a case of lining it up. And again, letting the glue grab it. So I tend to hold it at an angle where gravity will kind of hold it. And then grab some kicker on a micro brush and just touch it to it until it holds it. And then there's a little bit of CA glue underneath. You can get the lower front bumper where it needs to go. I'm just getting some kicker ready. So I put glue on the body of the car and kicker on the bumper. So when these two touch together, it should, should instantly glue. All you need to do is just get that centerpiece and then I can glue the back pieces in from behind. So it is tricky to do, but if you do it this way, which is the way Dan suggested to me, you can get it all lined up. And then there's a tricky little bit of chrome trim to sit on the under edge of the bonnet. So again, some Bob Smith's gold. Get it all angled and orientated the correct way. Like so. There we go. And like I said, the Bob Smith does take a little bit longer to grab, so just give it a second or two. But that is beneficial because it then allows you to move things around if you look at them in position properly. There we go. There's our front piece in. And then we've got these little chrome trim bits. These are a little bit fiddly to do. So just make sure you get them in correctly. Just need a little bit of a firm push in to the locating point. There we are. And then the door handle trick. Now, I know some people don't like this, I've been told. <laughs> um, but I think it's a good trick. My buddy Joe Camillari taught me this. So these are dressmaking pins. And use them for the door locks. Um, I think they look good, personally. So basically, I drill a small pile of hole. And then the larger hole, the width of the pin. I then cut the head of the pin off using my metal cutters. Like so. And then using tweezers, carefully pop it into the hole. Keep the cut off bits of uh, pin as well, because you can use those for antennas, for aerials and what have you. And then, yeah, holding it with some tweezers nice and gently. A little tiny dip of Bob Smith's gold on there. Tiniest little bit. There we go. We can push it into the hole, and Bob's your uncle. We've got a nice metal door lock. I think it looks good. It was a great tip from Joe, and yeah, I use it on most of my cars. Dressmaking pins you can pick up on Amazon or any haberdashery store. It's a posh word, isn't it? Don't say that very often on there, do we? Um, and they just look great. I really do like doing these. It's a nice little touch. There we go. Let's push them home, let them dry. And then the door handles. Door handles, particularly tricky on this. No positive location at all. So it was a case of Bob Smith's gold. Get it on there, get it tacked in place, hold it for a second or two with the tweezers, and then straighten it up, and then leave it the hell alone. And there we go, we're done. We've got some ultimate polish uh, system spray, shine spray. Now, before you do this, I'd recommend leaving this car to dry for a good few hours. Uh, with the Bob Smith's Gold taking a while to dry, you do not want to grab a bit that's still moist and drag it all over the body. So I would recommend leaving this. I normally leave it till the day after and come back and polish it all up. But this thing looks phenomenal. Um, even I'm going to say this is by far one of my best pieces of work. The colour is just amazing. 2K looks phenomenal. The kit is a brilliant kit. You're going to hear me repeat this in a minute when we go back to me. Um, but what a kit it is. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and I'm so happy with not only the overall finish, but the addition of the Pegasus wheels that were kindly sent to me by Dan. Cheers, buddy. Uh, the engine bay looks fantastic. Our Pro Scale distributor, absolutely great. Pro Scale Chrome, phenomenal. The Zoom on license plates, just a nice little touch. The beautiful papyrus white leather interior, the chrome trim, 
phenomenal for me one of my favorite builds to date and i would say one of my best builds i've ever done i think it looks absolutely phenomenal the color is just amazing it is a beautiful beautiful color and we've sold so many of these a pro scale on the back of my build um literally they've been flying out the door absolutely amazing and the stance yeah perfect just for me, definitely one of my favourite overall builds I've ever done. And yeah, there we go. We're not quite done yet. I've forgotten one important thing, which I've just spotted now when I took the engine, uh, the open the bonnet, and I forgot to paint the battery. So we've got some red Tamiri enamel paint on a cocktail stick, and we're just painting the tops of the reservoir top ups. And then we'll do the battery terminals with some Tamiya enamel paint again as well and that is it done absolutely brilliant build very long build series my throat is killing me from this voiceover i've done all these videos in one go two hours of talking but the overall results very happy with this i am missing one part off the engine it's like a breather or filler pipe from the front i've no idea where it went it vanished but I love this car. I think it looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, the colour just blows me away every time I see it. And uh, yeah, absolutely beautiful. The stance is phenomenal on the car. Yeah, I, I can't say enough about how much I enjoy building this. And I think I definitely need to grab another one. It looks great. So yeah, there's another one off the bench. Now, uh, I think this is build number seven or eight of the year now. I can't remember where I'm at now. Definitely one of my favourite builds to date um and definitely a good showcase car for pro scale itself um yeah i think it speaks world i think our paints um sell themselves basically um especially the chrome system which on this one's by far the best looking one i've done um even underneath doesn't look bad i compromised a bit on the underneath by assembling it all together but hey i think it turned out all right in the end so there we go we've got some pictures of it now this is my new photo booth as well I bought a fold away photo booth on Amazon. It wasn't a cheap one, and it definitely made a difference to the photos. It makes them look a bit cleaner and softer, um, and I think it makes this build just look absolutely fantastic. So I've got to try and remember what we did now. This was primed in Pro Scale White Primer, or was it grey? No, grey primer. Several coats of Sausalito Fire Mist Metallic. Uh, we masked off and sprayed all the silver work in Pro Scale Super Fine Silver. Black Tamiya Panel Line Wash, Pro Scale Paints 2K Clear. Engine was a mixture of Pro Scale Paints and Metallics. Uh, the interior is Pro Scale Paints Papyrus White Leather with White Flocking. We did engine and interior highlights with the exterior color. Uh, Pro Scale Chrome System on the exterior. Zoom on license plate. Pro Scale Distributor on the engine. Pegasus wheels and brakes on the uh, wheels and brakes, obviously. And all polished up with the uh, Zoom on uh, polish set. Uh, compounds and 3M Trizic pads. And there we go. Let's go back to me for some final thoughts. So there we go. All done. And uh, what can I say that I haven't already said? Not a lot, really. Great kit. Thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm going to repeat myself. I said I would. Absolutely phenomenal kit. No issues I can think of with it whatsoever. Goes together like a dream. There's a lot of parts and a lot of chrome parts as well. So if you're going to re-chrome it, it is quite a bit of work. Uh, it's a big car as well. Uh, but even just out of the box, it'll build up great. Adding things like I did just takes it to the next level. And uh, It is by far probably one of my most enjoyable builds to date, if not ever. I absolutely love building that car. It's a beautiful looking machine as well. It looks absolutely fantastic. With those Pegasus wheels and brakes, the stance just looks awesome. So... Yep, one of my favourite, probably my favourite build to date, without a pro, uh, shadow of a doubt. So, hope you guys enjoyed watching it as well. Next up on the bench was going to be the Johan Superbird, which I've actually started and got quite a long way through it and kind of ran out of steam. So, I started a 67 Chevelle Pro Street, uh, which is underway. We've also got the Ford GT on the go from Tamiya 2. So there's loads in the works coming up um, as well as something maybe a bit different. You're going to see some different reviews coming up as well. So stay tuned with that one. 
So there we go, another vi video build of the bench. My throat is killing me. I did all two hours of that voiceover, one after another, and my voice is toast. So, yeah, I'm going to go chill for a bit. So I hope you enjoyed that build as much as I did. Uh, if you've got any comments or questions, post them down below. Uh, if you built the kit, let me know. If you're thinking of getting it, let me know. Any, whatever you see, just comment down below. And there we go. As I said, if you want early access on the videos, the Patreon link's down below. You can click on it, pick the applicable tier. They've all got different perks. Like I say, you can get 10% off Pro Scale Paints. I think it's tier 4 and higher. Um, there's a few perks down there. You get early access to all the videos. It's like three months early access to the videos. Uh, and you keep me being able to do this. Without your support, I couldn't keep doing this. So it is important for me, Patreon. Um, Pro Scale Paints is down there as well. We can get all the paints I've used in my build series today. Near enough all of them. Uh, and if there's anything on there you don't see that you want, drop us a message and we'll do our best to try and match it for you. So there we go. Everything else is linked down there. you got all the Facebook page, the forum, UMP retails down there. Like I say, Pro Scale Painters there. There's an email address if you want to get in touch with me. There's links to my scale mates. You can go look at my stash. You look at my Etsy store where we built models are for sale. Uh, there's links to all the products I use and a couple of links as well. There's an Amazon store and a link on the forum as well. Uh, and as always, make sure you sub to the channel, give the video a thumbs up or down, click the bell notifications to get notified of all the latest videos, and leave a comment. I love reading all your comments. They always spare me on. I don't always reply because they do get quite a lot, but I love reading all your comments, so please leave a comment down below. And there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. I will catch you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye. And as always, thank you to all my current patrons whose name's going to flash up at the end of this video. Bye-bye.